Ladies and gentlemen, now in today's video, I want to talk about why it's probably a good idea that Netmarble either immediately remove Territe from the game or consider changing it to something that is so different that it's pretty much unrecognizable from the current system that it is now. Because this is something that they've shoehorned into the global version and we've done a couple of guides on how to farm it and looking at kind of the very complicated it process and it is crazy man the process that people need to go through if they want to buy and sell it. But the thing is fundamentally for you know 99% of people that actually want to play this game Territe's just a pain in the ass. but also for the people that want to farm and make money the infrastructure and the way that they've kind of like designed the earnings on it is just like it's just stupid it's basically like an infinitely farmable ponzi token that doesn't actually encourage play in the game but just leaving it on auto all of the time so you're not actually incentivizing the right players here all you're kind of like um incentivizing is like leave it in chaos fields like 23 and a half hours a day and just do you know the familiar adventures every six hours and we've seen with play to earn games like axie and Findy because i'm i'm actually quite deep and experienced in the play to earn market i've been tracking these games for like the last 18 months is that um you know bot shops are going to come up very very quickly and this is where they have i mean this game is built in so well because they've already got auto they don't even need to design a bot for it <laughs> but with axie infinity i remember i saw this video where it's like a shop and there were there were probably like uh seven to ten workers and there were thousands of phones all on shelves uh and they were kind of just going around making sure everything um uh, was working all right and you know tapping buttons and solving uh what is it the human uh algorithmic puzzles uh when that stuff kind of popped up so they had like a subsection of like a hundred phones that they were focused on um so yeah the, the fact that like this has a no barrier to entry and b the token is like infinitely farmable from like any account all it does really in the longer term is just kind of encourage the growth of these farms until it goes to like it to zero essentially and loses all of its value. And the only way that this would sustain is if you had enough demand from the buyer's end. And like this is where I was I kind of like wanted to actually get really deep into the game myself, mainly because I enjoy it, but also because I really want to understand um you know, how this economy they built actually works and what the sinks are going to be. And really, like, the biggest endgame sink is obviously you've got, like, upgrading, like, all your equipment, your familiars. So each one of these, every time you upgrade it, is, like, 300. Uh, and then you've got additional, like, enhancements up to plus 20. But then the uh, the biggest sink is actually linked to Asterite, uh, which is a crazy system. Again, this game is probably the most pay to win game I've ever played ever. So you've got like this uh, this dark um, magic gear where you have like a 50% chance uh, to either get like a massive boost of CP and effectiveness or you actually roll back. Um, so yeah, this one, you have to, uh, what is it, win that coin flip uh, like 10 times. And I did this with uh, the rifle the other night. I got to 25 and then rolled all the back, way back to 20. But this is fundamentally actually tied in to a mixture of in-game offers um, and also Asterite, which is the significantly more limited currency. But the fact that, again, Terra is infinitely farmable, it just means there is going to be this huge imbalance on the supply side and nowhere near enough demand. Because the only people that are really going to be doing this, man, are massive degenerate whales. So there, there is just nowhere near enough demand with the amount of whales that this game... Um, uh, currently has um, and even if there was again it's infinite supply um, of uh, terrorites so you know it would just uh, significantly outpace that um, so yeah it's just absolutely fucked it's on like a course to zero we've seen with stuff like smooth love potion and axiom findy you know that was the the crazy like play to earn currency of last summer again an infinitely farmable ponzi token um, and then just went uh, absolutely nothing it's like uh what is it below is it below half a cent or is it half a cent i think it's half a cent at the moment <laughs> you can see it just absolutely nuked there but the thing is like axie infinity as well they don't actually have a game but at the point to actually farm this token at the very top there's a very high barrier to entry of you had to get like um 
uh, three thousand to five thousand dollars worth of axes at the time, which which is what they're trading at, uh, to actually start farming this currency. So yeah, that was absolutely insane. And even with like a massive barrier to entry, this still got farmed down to nothing. And the thing is, with Territe, man, uh, this this has no barrier to entry. Literally, you can get some very clever bot shops, and they they are going to appear very very rapidly, and they're just going to farm this token down to nothing, mate. And then you've just inconvenienced literally every single player for, you know, no actual merit or reward because you haven't, like, properly designed the supply and demand curves for this token. You've made it an infinitely farmable Ponzi token that just inconveniences the majority of players. And you can really see the frustration. I watched a video from... um. Uh, what is it? HD uh, has me. We've also been talking a little bit in the uh, uh, the Discord DMs as well, because you know I, I come from a place. We were having some like uh, debates and talks about Asteroid the other day, um, and I messaged him earlier. I was like, you know, fantastic video on Terra. I really agree with all the points you've made. I've had like very similar observations as well. Uh, Part of me just punched my phone there uh, accidentally. Like you, you spot on about Terra. All it does is just really annoy people. Um, and get in the way of like the average player's progression um, but also kind of running deeper than that like the tokenomics of it are just you know they're, they're fucked um, and you could you know make the the counter argument and observation that uh, what is it the exchange from um, uh, what is it a territe to the token can be fluctuated so they can change it so that the token is worth a thousand instead of 300 for example um, you know, if they want to try and like prop the price up, but again, that still doesn't really fundamentally solve any problems. Um, it kind of just, you know, makes the, the token price look better, but it doesn't fundamentally change the fact that the core resource is infinitely farmable um, by anybody creating an account ever. So the, there's no barrier to entry. There's nothing that stops this token in the wider history of everything going to zero unless they pump loads of money into it, which doesn't make any sense for Netmarble to do on a token that's infinitely farmable. And again, massive bot shops are probably gonna take the majority of the profits for it. Um, so yeah, the, just the core design of this one, I think I think it's just fucked. And it's already seen like a, a little bit of a, uh, a slate in as well, because it actually did reach. There was one point on the very first day, because obviously initially, all of the whales like were like, I need loads of Terai man. I want to upgrade like all of my gear and stuff. So I actually went to four MBX, which is about sixty dollars a token on its first day. And now MBX is down, I think, to about thirteen dollars. And this is trading uh, overall, I think, about uh, eight to nine dollars. So you know, why the while there still is like a, a level of demand as people are. Um, you know, sorting out their accounts and uh, uh, leveling up as well. Yes, yeah, seven dollars at the moment, just for comparison here. It kind of does meet this ultimate fate of like there's infinite supply of this token and an infinite supply of this currency, and you know the demand is just is not going to be there. It's it's going to dry up at a certain point. Even when you know players get. Uh, all of their gear and stuff they need up to like plus 20 enhancement um, or they decide to you know mega whale out and go for uh, what is it the asteroid uh, kind of darkness infused gear now moving on from that as well I think one mode of gameplay that really needs to come to global is kind of like boosted normal pvp so this is pvp where every single player has exactly the same stats because currently the PvP is the biggest pay to win clown fiesta I have ever seen. And I'm fine with them having whale PvP. I think having like two separate game modes is the way to go about it. Because these games, they need massive blubbery whales to survive. Free to play games, again, they make 99% of their money from like the top 0.01% of players. There are some people like myself and also my friend Nato as well, just going ridiculously hard on this game. Uh, and again, this is coming from the perspective of somebody that is, is currently number one in all of Europe in PvP, and my engineer is just stupidly overpowered. I um I felt bad playing PvP the other night because literally uh, I kind of I got this darkness weapon, I got super high crit chance, and if I crit one of my attacks, 
everybody dies. <laughs> Literally, I'm getting like 120k, 150k crits, and it's to the point I don't even want to make videos, dude, because it's so pay to win. This is by far, by a massive, massive landslide, the biggest pay to win game I've ever seen. But I, I think, you know, whale PvP, it needs to happen in these type of games, because the whales, they love to get sweaty, they love to try hard, they love to flex. I love when I'm um, uh, also battling against some of the biggest whales on Europe. Um, but also, again, like, the majority of your population in this game are free to play. They're not going to be spending thousands of dollars, but it's very important for the overall health of the community, the population, all sorts of stuff that we see externally, the forums, Reddit, YouTube, Twitter, all of this stuff that kind of lives in the external ecosystem of the game, it's really important that there is a large healthy player base and a really interesting scene going on. So I don't see why they can't have like free to play boosted PVP. And if they had that, what they could do is rework Territe so that it is a currency that only kind of the best and most skilled players can actually earn via playing PvP and Nino Kuni. So it kind of gives those those players who um uh, want to spend the time to kind of you know grind out some of the best spells in the game, um, you know, get really good at playing and kind of chain CCing your opponents and maybe want to make pre-made teams as well. There's like so many interesting ways that you can do PvP in this game that kind of gives a, an equal footing to everybody and isn't brute force pay to win while also keeping that separate mode of pay to win for the, the sweaty try-hard blobbery whales that just want to, you know, throw their credit cards around and just smash each other for the asteroid. So if I was in Netmarble shoes, that's what I kind of rework uh, Territe to, is kind of this, um, this skill-based currency that can only be obtained uh, by some of the best free-to-play players, and I completely remove the requirements for kind of leveling everything up, uh, you know, evolving the items and kind of make the store, uh, you know, like rare cosmetics or, you know, some rare box or summons, something like a little bit similar to the Asterite. So, you know, when free to play players, the best ones, the most skilled, the most dedicated, uh, actually do win in this mode of gameplay and get, you know, fat stacks of rewards, then they either have the option to, you know, uh, you know, take on board all of those rewards and maybe try and work their way up, way up to the, the whale PvP, or they have the option to, um, uh, you know, sell the rewards to the whales uh, and then either, you know, spend a bit of money on the gacha if they want or just kind of take that money um, to spend on whatever else they'd like. Um, so, yeah, I think that could be a much more sustainable way uh, and a much more um, exciting way to actually do Territe than what it is at the moment, which just encourages, you know, 23 and a half hours of auto farming every single day. Um, <laughs> and then like, you know, 30 minutes of just clicking on familiar missions. Um, so yeah, I, I'd really like to see some pretty significant changes in regards to Asterite. I, I thought I'd share my th thoughts in this video as well. But um, the thing is, this game is, is very, 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 very pay to win. I've played a lot of gacha games. This is by far. Uh, the biggest pay to win clown fiesta I have ever seen. Uh, and I want to show you the account because my account's like pretty stacked, man. You can have a look at some of my uh, equipment here. Uh, you know, we've got like the uh, the level 30, like plus two additional copies, plus 23 on this. And, you know, some maxed out uh, uh, four star weapons upgraded to six star and some shiny stuff here. Uh, and I'm sitting on at the moment about uh, 764,000 CP level 68 but i will show you now uh the account of uh the biggest whale that i am aware of currently on the um uh, the european version nato nato is just under 1.2 million cp already understand that on the korean version again we're going to get more enhancements more progression systems as well we're going to get level 150 but the biggest whales on the korean and japanese version are like between i think 4.5 to like 5.4 million cp so we still have so much to go in terms of gaining those additional power levels it really is crazy um but yeah have a, have a look at like nato's uh gear and equipment you can see she's got kind of plus 10 on the um uh, the weapons has been rinsing the equipment gacha as well um, and can just you know infinitely summon on that gacha to get like everything plus 10 because every single day she's yeah just bombing down like 300,000 <laughs> diamonds um, but yeah just absolutely ridiculous but the, the thing is with the asteroid store uh, just to kind of put it into perspective from uh you know that that top down like whale super sweaty point of view 
Um, so if we go to, what is it, medals here, we can have a look at the asteroid store. The thing is, if you buy any of these items, it's going to take you, uh, I think, between like two to five months before they're better options, potentially, than the four star shinies that you can just summon for in the gacha. So yeah, as you can see, like even without anything from the asteroid store, this game is stupid, stupid levels of pay to win, man. Um, and again, this stuff is just gonna cost like so much that li literally like even whales are like, nah, it's a bit too expensive at the moment. Um, Cause for like just over a thousand asteroid, uh, I think it's like $30 or something at the moment. It's something like pretty, pretty damn ridiculous. And again, um, in order to like fully like plus 10 something, uh, you will need 15 copies of anything there. So I think like the, the main thing, at least in my observation, that's like really broken on the, um, uh, Asteroid Exchange and, uh, you know, makes that pay to win go a little bit more ham is probably like the Dark Magic Crystals, because again, that's used for uh, getting the significant, like up to plus 30 enhancements on four star shiny pieces of gear. But it, again, it's not like um, even if you were the, the biggest whale and like you cleaned out this store, it's like not even optimal for like a few months because if you're an even bigger whale, it just makes sense to clean out the equipment gacha because then you can actually plus 10 stuff instead of plus 3 stuff. And there is a big, big difference in terms of stats from like three copies um, in comparison to all the way up to plus 10. And again, once you get to like, uh, what is it, 7, uh, 8, and 9, and 10, then it's two copies of that uh, piece of gear that you need. So yeah, th this is again, long-term super, super pay to win, built on top of like, you know, uh, probably about 15 systems in this game that are super, super pay to win, much like every single gacha, man, you know. Uh, I haven't played a gacha in a very long time, not that I can even remember, that hasn't been, like, diabolically pay to win. Like, Seven Deadly Sins was crazy levels of pay to win. <laughs> you seen those elite PvP videos, bro? We went crazy. My hero, the strongest hero, for the few weeks that we were playing that, man. Fucking hell. That was, that was insane. That was stupidly pay to win as well. Nino Kuni, I think, I think takes the cake, but also, um what is it? It's more evident in this game because there's real-time PvP, uh, whereas in, like, My Hero, there, there wasn't uh, gear in PvP as well, so that that was a, a contributing factor. But the thing is, like, it's, it's really difficult, I think, um, to have, like, a good PvP experience. I think you can actually have a really good PvE experience in this game without spending any money. I think there's, like, a lot of stuff to enjoy. The world bosses are so much fun, and kind of just progressing as a server on, um, uh, some of the field bosses it's just epic man it's a really really good time so i think the game like it does have a lot to offer um but at the same time again i i feel like if you're gonna do play to earn and if you're gonna do crypto or nfts tradable items then you need to think very very carefully about how you want to incentivize your players to play your game and kind of move throughout your economy and you want to reward kind of the, the most active, the most dedicated players, the most skilled players. And you don't want to reward, you know, 23 and a half hours of auto farming every single day. Because um, that, you know, again, it just encourages people to um, not actually play the game and enjoy it and go deep into all of the systems and get really good at it and kind of get deeply involved with the community. It kind of just encourages you to the game on auto and then fuck off and play something else which is not the kind of player base that you want to retain for the long-term health of any game so th those are just my thoughts on uh terai and asteroid but yeah on this channel i always try to get as deep as i possibly can into these games because i don't want to like play to level 10 and give you guys like oh this is terrible because i couldn't instantly get this x currency it's like dude I'm the number one whale on Europe PvP right now. I have been to the bottom of the rabbit hole. I have been looking into and playing play to earn games for 18 months. And I just see no way that Terra isn't an absolute train wreck in the months to come. 
and uh, I'm just I'm curious to see what happens. I'm very interested to see how they're gonna make some adjustments here. But yeah, this game it needs free to play PvP that is good, um, and it also needs a much better base level system than Terai. It kind of just needs to be removed. Um, so yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. But thank you all very much for watching. Take care, and I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day. You are not subscribed to the whale sin of spending. Who decided that? Subscribe now or enjoy the bitter taste of regret.